As of December 31st, 2019, Nigeria owed $3.18 billion to the Exports Import Bank of China, $76.13 million to the French Development Agency, $361.75 million to Japan's International Cooperation Agency, $32.14 million to the Exim Bank of India, and $202.27 million to Germany's KFW Group. Data from Nigeria's Debt Management Office shows that as of June 30th, 2021, Africa's largest economy was indebted to China, France, Japan, India, and Germany, up to $4.26 billion. A further breakdown of the data showed that the country spent $402.74 million in the 18-month period servicing these bilateral loans, even as it borrowed $400 million. There have been many questions as to how sustainable Nigeria's debt is and where the country's debt-to-GDP ratio stands. According to Trading Economics, Nigeria has a debt-to-GDP ratio of 34.98%, an increase from the 29.1% as of December 2020. And while the focus is on Nigeria's debt, there is also focus on how to keep it low and bring investments in. This past weekend, President Mohamedou Buhari spoke to investors at the ongoing Dubai Expo on the economic potential of Nigeria, telling them that the country remains the most viable and attractive investment destination in Africa. He added that the country is on the path to becoming the continent's leading industrial and trading nation. Let's talk about Nigeria's debt and investment mix today. I'm Tolu Lokwe, Adileru Balogun. Welcome. This is Business Edge. And joining me today is Aziz Lawal. He's the Managing Director of Trust Bank Capital Management Limited here in Lagos, Nigeria. Aziz, welcome back to Business Edge. Thank you so much for joining me. Good morning. Thank you for having me. All right. So let's start with um, the people that Nigeria is indebted to. And we have the bilateral loans for China, France, Japan, India, and Germany, accounting for 12.70% of the country's total external debt of around $33.5 billion at the end of June this year. Um, and Nigeria spent $38.22 million servicing the loans in Q2 of 2021. Is there any particular reason that these five countries hold such a large percentage of Nigeria's debt? Sorry, I lost you for a moment there. Can you repeat the question? So I said of these countries that Nigeria um, owes money to, is there any particular reason that these countries hold, these particular five hold such a large percentage of our debt at about 12.70% of the overall debt the country has? Yeah, so... For for bilateral debts, they are majorly held for strategic and political reasons. Uh, if you look at the countries you mentioned, for example, if you take if you look at China, uh, clearly we all know that it's majorly for political reasons. Uh, China is coming to take the place of uh, the Western world in, in Africa. Uh, if you also look at India as an example, as far as uh, our oil export is concerned, uh, India is our biggest is our biggest trading partner. So you can understand why, uh, I mean, they have uh, such a level of debt at that level. So bilateral debts, uh, unlike multilateral, they are usually for strategic and, and political reasons. Yeah, thank you. All right. So in October, we heard from the Minister of Finance, Budgets, and National Planning that the federal government was very uncomfortable with the fact that it had exceeded the borrowing threshold in the Fiscal Responsibility Act. Now, that law provides a limit of 3% debt for sustainability, but the president can exceed the ceiling if there is a clear and present danger to national security or the sovereignty of Nigeria. And that happened in 2020, but we're hearing that they're trying to prevent that from happening in 2021. When you look at the threshold, given the situation of things for Nigeria, pre-COVID, during COVID, and now post-COVID, is that 3% reasonable? There are some who believe that the threshold should actually move up to 5%, and some who believe the threshold should reduce to 2%. Yes, yeah, so uh, for the threshold at, at, at 3%, it's, it is reasonable. I mean, looking at, I mean, in the world of normality, it is very reasonable, actually. Uh, so, though there have been several debates on uh, why it should be reduced, uh, 
majorly to curb the indiscipline of, of governments. But then, uh, three percent uh, threshold is not is not bad. It's fair. Uh, but considering the current realities, uh, because now we are above the three uh, percent threshold, uh, getting close to around three point five percent. I mean, the realities around what led us to that, which is a pandemic. I mean, nobody nobody saw that coming. So, government going beyond the threshold by that by that level of basis points, it's it's still reasonable actually to to be fair to to government. And the call for reduction is majorly to curb the indiscipline of government. But then, in, in the world, in this capitalist world, there's very little you can do uh, uh, as far as debt is concerned. You mm. still have to go. Uh, to the debt capital market to to raise money so it is reasonable actually so what do you say about calls to increase the threshold you're saying we're standing around 3.5 percent just slightly above the three percent threshold many people have looked at the macro and macro uh, micro and macro indices of where nigeria's economy is and they say the government needs a bit more leeway a bit more room they should have a, a bit of a higher threshold what do you say to that I actually should actually because even most most of our trading partners, as far as debt is concerned, I mean, uh, typically for European countries, they will stop dealing with you once your your threshold uh, to GDP is above sixty percent. So uh, Nigeria currently, uh, so 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 the reality is that we are still we still have the room to expand. But the problem is that I mean. What analysts have, have struggled with, with over over the years is that is it is it indiscipline of government. Mm. But then we cannot keep emphasizing indiscipline of government to 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 narrow this threshold because to a large extent in this current world the level of your development cannot be detached for from your from your side of debt really. Mm. So to a reasonable extent that that threshold is reasonable and it should be increased. Mm. Maybe somewhere around around four five six percent thereabouts but three percent is reasonable should it go below that for me it shouldn't go below that it should be increased rather all right so let's talk about debt servicing now this is a large part of the debt conversation for nigeria the government spent about 1.8 trillion naira on debt servicing in the first five months of 2021 representing about 98 percent of the total revenue generated in the same period Government is insisting that its GDP to debt ratio remains within a safe range of 23%, and it has spent many years now using revenue to basically service piling debt. When you look at how much Nigeria is spending to service its debt, what picture does it paint of the economy? 98% of the revenue goes to servicing the debt that the country has, spending 1.8 trillion in the past, in five months, first five months of 2021. What picture is it painting for us? And the picture that it paints is exactly what we are seeing. High inflation rate, double digits. Uh, unemployment rate, double digits. And so uh, basically, when you spend so much of your revenue in servicing debt, you deprive uh, other sectors, other uh, areas of the economy that needs that fund. So you have lower infrastructure because of that, uh, definitely you are going to have higher inflation and and, uh, and low and high unemployment rates so that's the picture really and uh, i mean there's there's also the case of uh defaults i mean that it it, it also is it also raised the concerns of defaults uh, because of but then uh, the the nigerian the nigerian debt space and capital markets i mean it's so it's so sophisticated now that it's actually difficult to 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 you don't see the the, the the what's it called the government defaulting as far as as far as debt is concerned because uh, there's there's always a room for them to come to the market over and over to raise more money to pay down existing debt or to service uh, or existing existing debt so again the impact is what we are seeing presently the picture is what we are seeing presently double digit inflation levels high unemployment rates and, uh, and, and, and resulting in security threats to the country. Thank you. All right. So the IMF in their October 2021 fiscal monitor report said that Nigeria's gross debt to GDP ratio will increase from 35.7% in 2021 to 36.9% in 2022, 37.7% in 2023, 39.1% in 2024 and reach 40.6% in 
in 2025. Again, this is still below the threshold of about 60%, and we'll get into that after the break. But when you see this upward trajectory of Nigeria's debt to GDP uh, ratio, what are we saying? What, what is that telling us in terms of the health? You've talked now about the high, rising inflation in double digits, the high unemployment as well. But government is saying they're going to stay at this 3% threshold in the Fiscal Responsibility Act, but yet the projections are that our debt to GDP ratio will continue to rise. So overall, what should we anticipate? Yes, so we, we have a government that is, uh, as part of its policy, that is very, very heavy on infrastructure. Or uh, if you if you it, can, it is allowed to be heavy on infrastructure, but then you need re your revenue to support that. Uh, when when revenue when we're heavy as far as revenue was concerned, uh, talking about oil prices between 2012 2016 there about it contributed about over 50 percent to to our our earnings as far as revenue is concerned. Uh, coming. And then oil prices were trading around over hundred dollars per, per barrel. Now they currently trade way below that, around seventy dollar per barrel. And for most of what we saw in the last three years, they probably were trading around uh, sixty to seventy dollars per per barrel. In the same period, particularly during uh, uh, from the COVID era, our our daily production reduced from what we used to have of over two million uh, barrel. Uh, what's it called? Uh, two million um, barrels uh, per, uh, per day on a daily basis, or compared to what we have now of over just around 1.3 million uh, million bar barrels per day. Again, this you see the revenue revenue is narrowing. Revenue is narrowing, and currently our tax penetration. So, uh, what we used to what used to be our main source, what used to be the main source of revenue for government, which used to be over 57 percent at the at, at the time when oil was trading over 100 dollars per barrel uh, it's currently way below that in a country where tax penetration rate is just about six percent the average tax penetration rate in africa is over 16 percent in nigeria it's just about six percent so you have seen revenue from 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 tax you have reducing revenue from oil, and you have a government that wants to fund infrastructure. So what is available for you not naturally is a debt space. If I cannot raise more money to fund my needs, uh, if I cannot get my revenue to fund my needs, I would have to borrow to fund those things. And that's what we are seeing. And it will continue to in in increase because you see the deficit is increasing. Uh, for 2022, 2022 budget, we are looking at a deficit of over $6 trillion. That is, I want to spend so much, but I can't, I don't have so much to back it up. What that means in summary is that we are going to borrow at least six trillion next next year. So it will continue to increase, looking at the policy of government and the reality of tax penetration rate and, and oil prices. Thank you. You've said a lot, and we have to come into this conversation around what Nigeria is borrowing to fund. There's the conversation around infrastructure, also looking at funding projects that will now become self-sustaining and revenue generating projects you're laughing which means you're going to explain this part of it when we come back we'll also touch on the conversation should we be looking at the debt to gdp ratio or looking at the debt to revenue ratio for a country like nigeria uh, as these hold the line the conversation today is looking at nigeria's debt and investment mix and we will definitely touch on the investment aspect of things when we come back from the break stay with us And still with me is Aziz Lawal, the Managing Director of Trust Bank Capital Management. And we're looking at Nigeria's investment and debt mix. And right before the break, I brought up the conversation around what Nigeria is borrowing to fund. And I'll bring Aziz back in here. When we look at that, there's a conversation around Nigeria's infrastructure deficit, which is large. There's a large infrastructure deficit across the continent. But then there's also the conversation around funding, self-sustaining, and revenue-generating uh, projects. Now, recently, we had the government 
government say that uh, they were also going to borrow another 4.1 uh, billion, I believe it is, 4.1 uh, billion dollars. Um, and they listed some projects that they said would be part of those projects. And those projects, of course, included some very interesting things when you get into it. Agricultural productivity, some of them have that kind of project going to Cross River and Nugu and Lagos State. You also have the Nigeria Sustainability Water Supply Sanitation and Hygiene Project as well. Um, you also have uh, World Bank supported projects which include Nigeria's COVID-19 preparedness and response projects. When you look at what Nigeria is borrowing for and how those projects sort of can pay back the money borrowed, where is the conversation? Has Nigeria been able to find a good mix? Yeah, sorry, I lost for a moment there been able to find a good mix in the projects it's borrowing for, like infrastructure, like hygiene, but also projects that can also generate revenue for the country. Yeah. Okay. So, I, I mean, I, I'm struggling with the audio, but I, I'll give my response. On, on viability of projects and uh, if they can sustain uh, because most of these, most of these, most of these projects, uh, most of these capital projects, we are borrowing to fund them. Uh, so the question, the question is, can can this, can this infrastructure, can they pay back this, these loans? Can they fund these debts? Are they viable enough? Can they, can they boost the G, GDP uh, well enough such that we can get so much tax from it? So Nigeria's, Nigeria's problem is interesting. You so you have, you have. We are mostly, most of the time, we believe that our our leaders are not disciplined enough to manage the company's re, country's resources. Then you have, you also, on the other hand, you also have uh, citizens who think they've done enough and uh, the government should stop disturbing them for, for so much. So uh, they want to have a good road from, from Lagos to Ibadan, for example, but nobody wants to pay too on the road. Mm. And uh, they want that road to to pay back itself, which it's a lot of these projects are not are not viable. They cannot they cannot pay back these debts. Uh, looking at the current structures that we that we have, and uh, most of these projects, of course, we've had popular. I mean, you have, you we all hear regularly where they say PPP, 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 but the reality is that there are some. There are some projects that it's just government that has to do it, like the rail project, for example. I mean, that takes that that, that takes 30, 30, 30, 40 years. I mean, no, no, no bank is going to borrow any government to fund that kind of project or any private individual to fund that kind of project. Mm. So it, it, it comes back to government. And um, if you look at the price we are paying for that rail service, rail, rail as an example, I'm just using that as an example. For, for for as an example of the many projects that we are doing that in the coming years it will still go back to the old old position uh, so eventually it, it, it dies down and uh, I mean eventually it closes because the government cannot sustain it or it cannot be managed because the money the, the fares being paid for those real services they cannot sustain those those real those real networks they cannot sustain that that transport so a lot of these projects are not viable. We uh, we have to. The government has to has to come forward. We have to come up with a roadmap that that will show transparency. That will that that will that will show the hands of government. That will make the government cleaner, so that the government so that the people can trust the government to pay to fund these projects. That's 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 uh, that's the level that we are presently. A lot of these projects, a lot of these projects are not are not viable. They cannot fund. They cannot pay back. They cannot pay back themselves. So, you, to, so this debt servicing will continue to roll over and it will continue to expand until someone comes someday to come and negotiate uh, for for forgiveness. Thank you. All right, so before I get to what President Buhari said this weekend, let me quickly ask this. Uh, the president of the African Development Bank, um, Dr. Kimu Miadeshina, said Nigeria's debt service to, ratio, to revenue ratio is 73% and that the country must decisively tackle its debt challenge. Should the focus be on debt to GDP or debt to revenue for Nigeria? 
it's not debatable actually that it, they are the focus for Nigeria should be debt to revenue. But then it's it is what is typically most of the time governments take the parameters that are convenient for them. So it's just convenient for them to be using debt to GDP, and they have support from abroad that that says that I mean as long as it is not more than sixty percent, they are just fine. So you expect that the government will continue to stay with that. But for Nigeria, with our unique challenges, uh, debt to revenue definitely is a better parameter. Thank you. It's to increase revenue, people are saying is to bring in more investments. So over the weekend, the president was speaking at the Dubai Expo, and he urged investors from the Gulf Corporation countries to bring more investments into Nigeria. He said Nigeria continues to remain an attractive and viable investment destination. How can investments help Nigeria out of its debt situation? In year number one, when when for, this is Nigeria is heavily dependent on FX foreign currency. Number one, uh, as the moment the country is viable as an investment definition a destination, uh, I beg your pardon. Uh, you see a lot of dollars coming into the country, and what that means is that the pressure on the naira will reduce. And I mean, from there, our prices will uh, pressure on prices will also also reduce. Uh, so th that's that's one part. Then also, a lot of this funding so they come into infrastructures. Uh, so a lot of foreign, so a lot of uh, uh, private partnerships that that are for funding infrastructural projects are currently suffering now. Why? Because uh, because foreign investor investments are not coming in. That's only one part. In, in the same Nigeria, you have where we are complaining that foreign direct investments are decreasing, they are not coming. In, in the same Nigeria, you have fund, fund being raised by startups. I mean, getting to all year eyes, as in every other year, Nigerian startups are breaking records. As we speak, as at November, Nigerian startups have raised over $1.3 billion. That is number one in Africa. So government actually needs to come and sit down with the youth and uh, and ask them what's the magic. Uh, I was with a founder last month and they said they raised over $1 million and they never left their office in Lagos. And Nigeria to raise $1 billion, they will dance around the whole world. So, I mean, Nigeria as a government to raise $1 billion will dance around the whole world doing roadshow. So it's 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 an interesting, it's an, it, it, it's an interesting, uh, comparison. Like the reality is that we can still attract, we can still attract the needed foreign direct investment with the right support uh, from government, with with government creating the right environment, with government supporting the right businesses. We need to sit down with our youth and have conversations. Are they doing this magic? As we speak, Nigeria is number one as far as not of fundraising. Is concerned. How are they the why government is and a lot of these startups they don't even leave Nigeria to, to raise this money. It's just some Zoom Zoom sessions and meeting and exchange of documents and it's in the news. So so country con company has raised uh, so much. There are some startups presently. They have raised money. I mean, they have made more money more than some states in this country. I mean, that's it. That's a that's a reality. So. Government needs to focus and shift direction. Also, all those traditional, I mean, this is what this is the way it used to be. This I must continue to be. We need to shelve those traditional uh, uh, conversations and come back, come, come down to what uh, reality. Thank you. Please, thank you very much. Because I feel like what you've just said there also buys into the World Bank report that we discussed last year, or last week rather, that said Nigeria must do business unusual. It's time for the country to try to do things in a different way. Aziz Lawal, thank you so much for joining me. We'll have this conversation again sometime soon. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you. And we're seeing a common thread with Nigeria, the largest economy on the continent. The calls are rising and the evidence is before us that the country must do things differently than it's been traditionally used to. And that could be a way out of its challenges. We have next NC4 to watch. Stay with us.
And as we wrap things up here, a few stories we're keeping our eyes on. We start in the southern part of the continent where South Africans have taken to their beaches on Sunday to protest against plans by Royal Dutch Shell to do seismic oil exploration, which they say will threaten marine wildlife such as whales, dolphins, seas, seals, I beg your pardon, and penguins on a pristine coastal stretch. The wild coast is home to some of the country's most undisturbed wildlife, and it's also a major tourist draw. Kenya Power has suspended five executives in an ongoing forensic audit to curb fraud at the loss-making state-run utility. In a memo to staff, the acting manager and director, Rosemary Odor, said the senior managers would proceed on a 60-day compulsory leave to pave the way for investigations. Investors bought only 64% of the shares in the deeply discounted initial public offering by MTN Uganda. The telecom sought to raise 27.6 billion shillings from the sale of 4.47 billion shares as part of the government's push to spur local ownership in the industry. And finally, Moody's Investors Services has upgraded its outlook on nine Nigerian banks to stable from negative, even as it affirmed its B2 rating of the banks. Moody's explained that the affirmation of the Nigerian bank's ratings is based on expectation that the bank's solvency will remain at adequate levels over the next 12 to 18 months. And that's Business Edge. Follow us on social media at New Central TV. Download the mobile app. And of course, follow us on all of our platforms where we are available. I'm Tolu Lokwe, Adila Rivalogun. Have a pleasant day.